I'll tell you what, I'm feeling a little lot more relaxed being behind the podium than in the seat. <laughs> oh, but I do appreciate all you guys are doing. It's already been a long primary season. It's probably going to be a record primary season. I don't know if we'll ever have this long of a primary season again. It's an exhausting thing being out on the campaign trail. And I give you guys a ton of credit for the work that you've already done and the work that's ahead of you. I appreciate appreciate each and every one of you for standing up and taking a stand on behalf of all of us here as Republicans in the state of Illinois. More than anything, we need a revolution in 2022. Yeah. So um, I'm going to remind them that there, there's the first part of this is our rapid fire yes or no responses with a paddle. So you each have a paddle. Uh, red apparently means no, and green means yes. And so uh, Steve and I are going to switch off and ask a couple questions, and it's just simply going to be, do you, is it yes or is it no? So for all the candidates, do you support the Illinois Concealed Carry Law? Okay. All right. For all the candidates, are you pro-life? Okay, green means this, the, the, is, the answer to the question is yes. Red means that the answer to the question is no. I got the first one wrong already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what the rules are here, but um, Claire? Okay, we'll start over. Okay. Um, the first question is, do you support the Illinois Concealed Carry Law? The second question is, are you pro-life? Third, yes or no, do you support Governor Pritzker's current mask and vaccine or test <laughs> mandates? <laughs> I will say there are some questions here that you would have, a, there should be an ejection button on the seat. <laughs> that would be one of them if you answered wrong. Um, do you support voter ID? Do you support a forensic audit of the Illinois November 2020 election? Okay. All right, Steve Bailich. Okay, I just want to say one thing about these guys. I, all I care about is that we beat JB and we fix where we live. And that means we got to, oh, let's go Brandon. Got to throw that in there, right? Okay, here's the first question. Do you support giving the illegal aliens the right to vote in elections. <laughs> I'm glad nobody made a mistake on that one. Uh, will you support the Republican Party's nominee 100% if you don't win the primary? <laughs> Do you think that critical race theory should be taught in public schools? Do you believe that the vote fraud is a significant problem facing elections in Illinois? Yeah. Okay, now for the more uh, up and down difficult part, we are going to start timed questions. Some questions have a three minute time limit, some one minute, some two minute. And they will be answered in revolving order. We're going to start out with uh, Darren Bailey. Senator Darren Bailey will ask, answer, ask, answer the first question first. It is a three-minute answer. And the timing goes green. You can talk all you want. Yellow, you got 30 seconds left. And when you see the red, you need to stop. Flashing red means that the um, uh, audio guy will cut off your speaker. <laughs> Yeah, we played hard, hardcore here. You know, just kind of like your school board meetings where they cut off your speaker. Yeah, I know, I know. 
All right. So here's the question for all, all candidates will answer this question, uh, starting with Bailey. Um, next will be uh, Mr. Rabine, then Mr. Roper, then Mr. Solomon. So Darren, the first question is, what are your three immediate priorities after, after you become governor, and what would you, your first 100 days look like? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Friends, I want to remind you, first and foremost, I have been standing for you since day one, and I will continue to stand with you and for you as your governor. Friends, we have got to get life, we have got to ease these regulations and taxes for the people of Illinois. I will be working to repeal the gas tax immediately. I will be working to, to bring support for the family, for every Illinoisan. We have got to get the woke policies out of our schools. We have got to give the teachers the ability to teach. We have got to return control of our schools to the local communities and the elected school boards of which this was always intended. And friends, we've got to restore integrity to our law enforcement by repealing all of these egregious bills that have been passed in January of this year. People want to be safe from Chicago all the way down to Cairo, okay? And then finally, we've got to get business back in Illinois. We've got to support the working men and women by backing off, getting rid of all these mandates, by getting jobs so that we can flourish and that we can function. Friends, I look forward to hitting the ground running and serving you, and these first 100 days are going to bring change like we've never seen in any other state. I have no doubt that what Governor Pritzker has created for us we're going to eclipse what Virginia does, just did in Illinois in November of 2022. God bless you. Your three immediate priorities after you become governor, and what does your first 100 days look like? So we've got a lot of work to do. We've, we have a tyrant in office now that's done a lot of damage to our state, don't we? First thing that we're responsible for as leaders in anything we do, whether it's our families, our businesses, in this case our government, is create safety. Public safety is an all-time low in our state of Illinois. We don't change that, we got nothing. So going after public safety by taking the handcuffs off our police immediately, changing this crazy law that was in place, retracting this crazy law that was in place, using the best minds in our law enforcement, like our, our, our sheriff here, Mendrix, and, and minds like his, the innovative mind like his, to get rid of this law and rebuild it. Secondly, we got a, we got a problem with our schools. What we're doing to our kids today, it's, edu it's educational abuse. We got to change it fast. We can't allow our legislators, our unions, and our governor to dictate to our parents what they should do, what they shouldn't do, what questions they should ask, and should they show up to, to challenge in schools, right? This is craziness. And, Third, thirdly, it's all about our economy, and this is what I thought I was going after in the first place, because this is what I know well. Jobs is what I know, know well. Taxes I know very well. We've got a big problem when it comes to jobs in Illinois. We're losing 50000 60000 a year. We've got a big problem with property taxes. We're the highest in the country. Some say we're the second highest. I believe we're first now. All right? This is tax theft, and we're ruining our state by, by high regulation, high regulatory environment on business, and we're, and we're killing our, all of us with taxes, ruining the values of our property. So these are the three things we're after. And, and we're going after it hard. We're going to be paving the way to stay. Remember this. Paving the way to stay by the paving guy, all right? Thank you. Mr. Roper. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. This is one of the main reasons we need to be here is we need to stand up together. I am a former law enforcement officer, and I'm an Army veteran, and I think that's exactly what we need here in Illinois. We need somebody to come in and fight for us, finally fight for us, and that's trained and experienced in taking out corruption and somebody that will actually do it. We need somebody that will do that. I will do that. I'm not scared. We need to get corruption. Corruption is huge. We, and taxes, they've talked about this. Our taxes, we're made fun of. Thank you. We're made fun of in the whole country. We, are, we get taxed to breathe. Enough of that. We need to get a responsible tax. We need to lower them down, encourage growth, encourage job growth, get businesses in here to where they want to, to do business here so we have jobs. We have money. We can enjoy our families and enjoy life go to church, et cetera. We couldn't do that here over the past, what, year and a half? They said, oh, you can't go to church. No, I'm sorry. No, no, we can do what we want. We, the people, have a voice. We need to get it back, and we demand it back, and I will lead that charge. We also need to get some voter integrity. Man, it's breaking my heart. I defended our country. Thank you. I defended our country, and I 
demand that we can vote and trust that our vote counts. I have met so many people that says, why do we even vote anymore? Why? We need a forensic audit here in Illinois, like yesterday. Thank you. The first 100 days, I think what will happen is I'll make a lot of criminals very scared because I have a plan and it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen and I don't care if I make them mad. I'm sorry. We have got to clean up our state and we will do it. We need patriots to stand up and run for any office possible. Register to vote, get out and vote and make sure we take our state seriously and make it happen. Make us proud of our state again. God bless you guys. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Jeannie. Thanks, uh, everyone that's here. I thank God for the opportunity to stand before you tonight. I believe strongly that every one of us, no matter who you are, no matter what background you come from, when it's time to make a decision, there's a frame of reference that you check with. There's something you think about when you try to make a decision. Well, I'm going to tell you about myself. This is how I describe myself, and this is how I'm going to make decision in governance. First, I'm a Christian man. Second, I'm a conservative. And third, I'm a Republican. <laughs> in that order. In that order. So my frame of reference is biblical. Whenever I have a decision to make, I check with my faith. Therefore, on the first day of becoming the next Illinois governor, once I raise my hand and take that oath, which I take very seriously, and you'll learn that about me uh, as we go on, the very first thing I'm going to do on day one, the moment my hand goes down, I am going to ban a word, one single word that's been becoming very popular in Illinois. It's called mandate. That word is going to be banned in the state of Illinois. No mandates, nothing. All right? No mandates, nothing. The first 100 days are going to be very busy. I'm going to work very hard to start what I call CPR for Illinois. CPR for Illinois. Constitutional Pension Reform. Last year, Governor Pritzker spent $60 million of his own money, of his own money, to put a measure on the ballot for you and I to vote whether we want our taxes increased. That's disrespectful. Right? You're going to ask me, you're going to spend $60 million of, your, of, dollars of your money to ask me whether it's okay for you to tax me. That's troublesome. I'm glad that measure failed. But here's what we have to do as a party, as Republicans running for governor. We have to come up with the solution. We already know the solution, the Democratic Party's solution. Their answer to everything, their solution to everything is more, more, more. Reminds you of that 80s song, more, more, more. Anyway. <laughs> more taxes, more taxes, more taxes. That's their answer. Well, we have to come up with an alternative. And I'm going to work very hard to put back on the measure where pension reform is going to be on the ballot for you and I to vote whether we want to do that. And it's got to be a constitutional reform. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to repeal all Pritzker taxes. This is a gentleman that he, yes, repeal all Pritzker taxes. And finally, reformation. I'm going to be the governor for reform, education, property taxes, and everything across the board. Thank you. Okay, the next question. Do you believe that parents who question school board policies are domestic terrorists? And that's a dumb question, right? It's not really the way I want it answered. I want to know specifically, not in general, I want to know exactly what you're going to do to stop it from coming here and anything to do with it. So, Rabines first, then Roper, then Solomon, then Bailey. Yeah, so 
number one, no mandates. No mass mandates, no vax mandates, no mandates, never, okay? That's number one. When it comes to, when it comes to our schools, we've got to, we've got to put our, our communities in charge of our schools. Again, legislators and Governor Pritzker and our unions can't, can't dictate what goes on in our schools. When you look at what we're seeing in these books today, I mean, Sheriff was showing us something yesterday. I, I got a copy. Some of you guys got a copy of that stuff, right? It, this is evil. This is evil. This is pornographic evil that we're, that, we're, that we're putting in the libraries of our kids now, right? This is going to go immediately. People would go to jail for this. Sheriff said this. People would go to the jail for this a year ago, and now all of a sudden it's okay because we have a tyrant, a socialist tyrant in office that's, that's pushing down these things with, his, with all of his socialist friends, okay? It's unacceptable. We got to get rid of that. When we look at, look at CRT, how crazy is this? CRT. I mean, this is racism, and if we don't call it out as this, we're, we're, we're kidding ourselves. We're, 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 we've got we to stand up strong. When we look at, when I look at my, my, my nephews and nieces, and one of my nephews here today, I've got, I've got Hispanic nephews and nieces, I have black nephews and nieces, and I have white nephews and nieces. I'm not going to ever allow my black and Hispanic nephews and nieces to think it's okay to be a victim, ever. And this is what we're teaching our kids. And I'm sure, I'm sure the heck not can ever allow my white nephews and nieces to think they're the cause of the problem, right? This is, this is wrong, it's racism, and we got to stop it. And when we look at what happened in Virginia and New Jersey, and how about New Jersey? A truck driver, a truck driver with $150 wins. I think, I think people are reading the Constitution again. They don't understand what freedom is now. Bottom line is, we're going to change all this. It's, it's, it's immoral, it's evil, and it can't be in the state of Illinois ever again. Very good. We, we need to stand up. I have six kids. One of them is in the military right now, is in the Army, and four are still in school. The CRT, the sex ed, this, this indoctrination, we definitely have got to stop this. These silly mandates. We're, we're, we do live in the United States, right? This is a free country. I, we do, and we need to keep it that way. And if we keep allowing them to tell us, hey, you have to get a vax or you're going to get uh, fired or whatever. No, enough of that. We don't need that. That is not how the United States works. It should be about choice. If you want to get a vaccine, get a vaccine. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. It's freedom of choice. Freedom, America. Now, I've been to many school board meetings and sat with the parents and watched the, the fear on their face as they listened to the board talk about what they're going to be doing and the passion in their fighting for our kids. You know, and I do the same thing for my kids. I do it for your kids. I will continue to always do that. Children are our future, and we have got to protect them, and we've got to bring God back to Illinois. We, ha we have to. I will never stop fighting. I took an oath in 1999 in the, in the United States Army. I got hurt. I blew my knee out. I broke my back. I, did, I wouldn't let that get me out. I, they, I had to get medical boarded, but I couldn't let that go. So I fought and fought and fought to make sure that I could make it as a police officer. I did. I worked as a police officer, and I got to the point where, hey, I got to stop. I got to stop. I need to make sure I can protect our communities, and if I can't do it because of the back or whatever, I just had to stop. But the point is, I will do whatever it takes. I will chew my arm off if I have to to protect our state. I've been highly trained to do it. I have a lot of experience to do it, and we're going to do it. And this domestic terrorism stuff, come on. Just because you're a certain color doesn't make you a domestic terrorist. Just because you believe a certain way doesn't make you a domestic terrorist. I, it, it sickens me because I've been trained twice to follow the Constitution. Everybody has the right to their opinion. Thank you very much. God bless. You believe that uh, parents that go to school board meetings are not domestic terrorists. We already know that. So now we want to know exactly what you would do to stop it. One of the top three policy agendas that I have uh, as the next governor of the state of Illinois is reformation. And big on that is education reform. And part of the education reform is consolidation. There, thank you, there are too many units of government 
in the state of Illinois. As a matter of fact, we're first in the nation. Over 6,000, and almost 1,000 of that, school boards. There are 102 counties in the state of Illinois. One of my aggressive approach to reformation as far as school board is concerned, I actually have that. This, just this morning, I was planning that out. We're going to be reduced to no more than 106 school boards. I'm going to tell you more about how we're going to do that as we continue in this campaign. That's part of the problem. The other part of the problem that we can't ignore is Springfield. We have a Democratic Party legislature. Veto proof, right? So a lot of Democrats in Springfield. Hey folks, it used to be that evil used to hide. Evil used to operate from behind the doors. I warn you, we're heading into a world evil is not hiding anymore. They're out there and they're out to get your children, our children. We need leaders that are going to fight and stand up and protect the children. That's where it starts. <laughs> Education, not indoctrination. Thank you. We've got some awesome candidates for governor standing on this stage with us. But friends, we can't afford for people to stand up here and give us promises without production anymore. So I stand here before you, someone who got a little ticked off at the tax increases of the 2018 budget, and I did something about it. I ran for state representative to get the person out of the way that actually supported that. I served for 17 years on the North Clay School Board prior to that. After getting off the school board, my wife Cindy and I opened up a Christian school, Full Armor Christian Academy. We have almost 400 students there, preschool through high school. Friends, a year ago, I sued Governor Pritzker over this very stuff, and we won. That lawsuit's never been dismissed, and it's never been overturned. I've done something about it. I was escorted out of session a little over a year ago when refusing to wear the mask. I drew the line and I stood up. I was the only one. <laughs> Friends, we've got to get J.B. Pritzker, the Democrats, and the political elites out of our lives. We, the people, have got to take control of our schools, our local communities. We have got to get involved in protecting our voting process. It's up to us. So as your governor, I will be educating you, I will be informing you, and I will be leading the way in showing you how it's done. Okay, next up is a two-minute question. Mr. Roper will begin, followed by Solomon Bailey and Rabine. And this is the question. How willing are you to accept federal money if it meant, means ultimately enlarging the state government. For example, Medicaid expansion under Obamacare was approved by Governor Quinn. Expanded taxpayer-funded preschool was approved under Governor Rauner after he was um, enticed by federal money. So the question again is how willing are you to accept federal money if it means enlarging the scope of state government? Well, look, you got to know where the money's coming from. When somebody gives you money, especially the federal government, what, what strings are attached? We have to look at everything. We have to look at every aspect. And that's what I was trained to do, and that's what I have experienced. And that's, you have to you see the, 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 uh, the mission, right? You have to look at it from every angle. Is this going to help us? Is this not going to help us? We have to always look at that. And we have to look at the goods, the bads, the uglies, and so, et cetera. I don't like taking money free because there's always, like I said, there's strings attached. So we have got to really carefully look at everything that's put before us, because some things are going to make it sound really good. Oh, this is the best thing ever. This is going to help. Maybe it will, but what is all the bad that could happen too? And then the other thing is, my, my command sergeant major taught me in, in the military. He said, a great leader has ears. 
listen, listen to who you're leading. They'll tell you what needs to be done. So that's the biggest thing is what do we want? That's what we have to do. We always have to look back at that because, again, some things are going to look great. It may be awesome on the cover, but what's really lying below in the swamp? And that's where we have to be careful. There's a lot of things that have been good in expansion, right? And a lot of things that really have not been good. That's what I have noticed. That's what I have heard, you know, putting over 30,000 miles in visiting with our Illinois family. I, I don't like to call it campaigning. It sounds really gross. I don't like that. I call it visiting with our Illinois family. And, and that's what I've been hearing is just people are fed up. The more money we take in, where is it? It's, it's going, it's going to come from somewhere. And, and we see it here, right? We're paying taxes out of our noses. Enough of that. Enough of that. We have to be responsible. Yes, we need to make sure we are growing, that we're doing, you know, promoting our state, we're helping our children to grow, helping our, with our colleges and et cetera, but we've got to be very, very careful what we agree to, what we sign. So that's what I would do. I would make sure I do it responsibly and with the voice of we the people leading the way. About 24 years ago, maybe a little more than that, I raised my right hand and I became a citizen of the United States of America. And let me tell you, part of the test, so there's a test. All you that are born here. <laughs> so there's a test to becoming a United States citizen. You have to support the Constitution of the United States. Actually, you take an oath. Support the Constitution of the United States and its form of government. And in my years in the United States, I've watched both parties, Democrats and Republicans, and I check their values and their policies and their platforms against my values and my beliefs. Remember I told you about that frame of reference? One of the things that attracted me to the Republican Party that I cherish is small government. Small government. So that the question of how willing am I to accept federal money to expand government. I'm not willing at all. Let's start there. We can start there. I'm not willing at all. So now we go on the t to the table and then we negotiate, right? I want free money. I'll take free money. I'll take grants. As long as there are no strings attached, right? I'll take that. I'll take funded mandates. If the federal government is going to tell us what to do and spend money, then you better give us the money you want us to spend. Right? Unfunded mandates are not going to be a thing in Illinois. I'll not, I'll, I will not be willing to accept federal money if it requires expanding government. As a matter of fact, I am running to shrink government. Thank you. One of the positions that I have on the, as a senator is to look at and approve every budget. So this year, first-term senator, friends, there's a lot of waste. Does that come to any surprise? We have, Illinois has a spending problem. The Democrats stand on the floor and say, no, we have an income problem. That means we need more of your money. I'm a farmer. We don't spend more than we make. Federal money, state money, guess what? It's tax money. It's your money. No more. What do we have to show for it in Illinois? Can you tell me? For the last 20 years, are you aware that the state budget has been propped up on $1.5 billion many times of a, uh, being in the red? 1.5, an additional $1.5 billion of, of uh, gosh, $1.5 billion of sales, bonds, sales, bonded sales. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the last 20 years, $3 billion each year of new tax increases. Friends, we've got to stop this madness. No more, no more excessive. The Democrats, J.B. Pritzker's answer to everything is to throw money at the problem, that money becomes the solution. What happens when we throw money at the problem? Government grows. We have got to shrink government. We have got to make government more efficient. We just received $16 billion from the federal government. Friends, it's gone. There's nothing to show for it. We have got to stand up. We have got to be real. We have got to hold government accountable. 
We've got to put men and women as direct agency directors over all these agencies, and we've got to hold them responsible to shrink government, to serve the people, and get Illinois back on the right track. That's the only way we can do it. So, so I think the summary here is big government sucks, right? We, when we look at this and, and the size of our government, as we said, over 6,000 units of government, right? We've got, we've got more income. We got, we're, we're almost the highest income per capita in the country as far, as far as taxes, and we're getting nothing done with it. Why? Because our, our government's the biggest in the country, okay? I'm a person that has seeked out unfair advantages in my life. Anything I do in my business, I look for an unfair advantage to compete better, to differentiate, to be world class. So years ago, about five, five and a half years ago, I was introduced to the Republican Governors Association. And I, I looked at this as an opportunity for me to know the best governors in the country so I could know where to do business. It's been a blessing to me to get to know the best governors in the country, the mentors, some of the older governors that are mentors, the, the Mitch Daniels of the world, the Rick Scotts of the world, and others. But I got to tell you what, it was a lot of fun. When, I, I shouldn't say fun. It doesn't, say, it doesn't seem like fun. But it, when, when all this stuff went on in, in early 2020, and the, and the COVID conversation going on, it was, it was amazing to be a, a, have a bird's eye view of what these governors were doing. Were they going to accept the mandates? Were they not going to? Were they going to shut down their states or were they not going to? To listen to the best governors in the country talk about what they're going to do, some of these Republican governors took, took all the money, in, in every case, including the unemployment, all the way to the end. Many of these governors did not. To listen to the best governors, to, under, to understand, the best governors all want smaller government. When I look at Indiana, how they've shrunk the size of their overhead, it's amazing. And it, it's, it started with Mitch Daniels, went to Pence, Eric Holcomb. They got the all-star team over. It's ridiculous. They keep getting these amazing governors. No tyrants at all there. It's amazing. So for me, my blessing is, is to be part of this team, to be, to be able to bounce things off of these great governors and their advisors. I'm going to continue to do that because when I saw what happened with the unemployment, how we wrecked, wrecked our, our employees across Illinois with, with bonuses to stay home. Smart governors across our country didn't take that money, did they? The dummies did, like ours, and every, every Democratic governor did, and ours, of course, included. But the smart one said, we don't need it. We're going to ruin our economy. We're going we're gonna to ruin our production. And they didn't. And they're in way better shape than we are. So collaboration with the best minds in the world will be my unfair advantage, and I'll continue to do that for you, for us, for Illinois. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Sol Solomon's going to be first, then Bailey, then Rick. Wait a minute. I do? You got me mixed up. <laughs> okay. We're going to do Solomon, Bailey, Raybine, and uh, Roper. Okay, now this question is going to be changed a little bit. Uh, we all know that you guys don't want to defund the police because you already said that when the rapid fire stuff went. So none of you guys want to defund the police or law enforcement agencies. But what will you specifically do? How are you going to stop it? Because uh, it seems like the Democrats, the socialists, they all want to do that. So how do you stand up and what can you do as governor to not let that happen? That question. <laughs> I was looking at the uh, Illinois state budget. By the way, by way of background, I teach political science at local colleges as part of my um, uh, career so far. And we discuss these issues in class. I prefer the pie chart of the budget. I prefer that because it jumps out at you. You see where, what's big and what's small. Ladies and gentlemen, public safety is less than 5% of Illinois state's budget. Did you know that? Less than 5% of Illinois state budget is towards public safety. Well, that's the first thing I'll do. By the way, guess what the biggest part is? Pension. Thank you. Pension. And that's why I'm running aggressively to reform CPR for Illinois constitutional pension reform. And what I'm going to do to public safety is actually fund the police. <laughs> 
Chicago is, you fill in the blanks. <laughs> and we pretend that we don't know what to do. We know what to do. Do we want to do it? Who is going to do it? One of us is going to have to do it because Pritzker is not going to do it. He's in bed with Lori Lightfoot. <laughs> not literally. <laughs> I'm going to quit while I'm here. <laughs> but no, um, we've got to reduce the crime in Chicago, and we've got to get serious about crime fighting. And the only institution that we have, the most effective institution that we have for fighting crime and reducing crime is our law enforcement. So I am going to be a pro, pro, pro law enforcement governor, and I am going to fund public safety more than the 5% that it currently is. Thank you. Friends, we need to be defending the police, not defunding the police. That's where the answer is at. I've had the backs of the police officers again since day one. I've stood with them. I've stood for them, and as a governor, I will be, the, one of the day one agendas will be repealing the egregious law enforcement actions that took place at the beginning of this year. Running for this position, friends, this is more than just about me. You realize we just need four seats in the House, four additional seats in the House, and then we do away with the veto-proof majority. Friends, I'm telling you what, we can take the majority in both of these houses the, the Constitutional Tax Amendment of 2020 proved that. That was a Republican landslide victory. But we have got to put men and women in office to make sure this happens. Friends, as a, as a governor, I will be, if we can't get that done, I'll be vetoing everything. But more importantly, I will stand up and I will communicate. I will talk to you. I will tell you what you need to be doing. Because what you know what we need to be doing? We need to be engaging with our state representatives and our state senators. Cindy and I are in Chicago a lot, in the south side and the west sides of Chicago. And guess what? Everybody there wants to be protected. They're frustrated because they're not protected. But many people, and I want you to think about that right now. Who is your state representative and who is your state senator? Unfortunately, many people don't know. Most people know who their congressperson is or who the U.S. senator is, but they don't know who their local units of government are. I've been engaging people since day one. I will get to continue to engage you and educate you on what we need to do to get Illinois back on the right track because, friends, everybody in the state of Illinois wants and needs to be protected, and we have to return integrity to our fine men and women of law enforcement. So how about the job that this union president is doing down there, John Catanzaro, right? What a job he's doing, right? Here's a guy, here's a guy standing up for his members like not many I've seen in the past. He's down 900 out of 14,000 police. He's down 900 now. The estimation is like 4,000 more will go if this mandate goes through that our governor and our, our Lori Lightfoot has put, has put down. So think about this. 4,000. No, excuse me. 4,000 plus. It's so almost 5,000 out of 14,000 done and gone if they get their way the end of the, the end of the year and push this mandate. It's sickening. It's wrong. And we need to all speak up and, and stand up for these police. Bottom line is these are the, 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 the those, how about, it? give them a hand, right? The, and the crazy thing is, those that are, they're going to walk are the strongest. They get the most backbone. They're standing up for what they believe in, freedom. Freedom, right? So I actually today, today, filed a lawsuit with Job Creators Network. Another unfair advantage I have is a national organization I help build called Job Creators Network. I was the sixth or seventh member in back 12 years ago. We've got 500,000 small businesses in this group now. So as, as similar to what the police are going through, small business, over 100 people or more are going to go through the same thing if we let this go. So this morning we filed the lawsuit after the language is finally done, and we're going after Biden in this lawsuit. We're going to, we're going to be in, the, in D.C. this week, coming up this week. We're going after him. So 
So job creators, if, if we didn't build this organization from the six or seven we started to, to the 500,000 small businesses across America we have today, we wouldn't have the strength we have, all right? But these are all free market people, freedom-loving people that love our country. And they're all pitching in so that this is costing me hardly anything, actually, which is awesome. So we got to fight. When we believe in something, we got to fight. I believe in small business. I believe in never a mandate on vaccination. This is ridiculous, all right? You're with me on it? All right. I am a former law enforcement officer. I love being safe. I loved, amen, amen. I love making sure that everybody else was safe. I love making sure that we are safe. Senator Bailey just spoke of that, Mo all of us did. We need our law enforcement. And me firsthand as, as former law enforcement, I know what it's like. It, it's not fun most of the time. You wear so many hats. You have to do so many things. Why? Because we're underfunded but we're still asked to do the exact same things. They're telling law enforcement, let's defund, let's defund. But what do they do when there's a problem? They call the police. So, I mean, come on, the hypocrisy has got to end. We've got to stand up for law enforcement. And as governor, we have, I have a lot of plans to, to bring our law enforcement back up. We need to give them more funding, give them more recognition. Same with corrections officers. They, they're so underlooked at um, and underappreciated. Uh, so we really got to stand up for our law enforcement and to keep our community safe. And one of the good things that I think that we can really do is bring our task forces back. In Chicago especially, we, have, we don't have drug task forces anymore. We don't have gang task forces anymore. They're gone. We need to bring those back. I will bring those back. Also, we have our National Guard. God bless our military and our National Guard, right? We can definitely use their help. They can go undercover, they can go in minivans, and they can radio in to our law enforcement and say, hey, there's a drug deal going on right here. Something. We got to do something. We got to stand up. We have to stand up and fight against corruption, crime. We need to make our city safe, our country are safe, our state safe. We can do this, but we have to, we have to fund our police. Okay. Uh, editorial comment on this one. You get two minutes, but I think you should only have, need 30 seconds. <laughs> so we'll see what you come up with. Okay, uh, order of March is Bailey, Rabine, Roper, Solomon. If the Democrats control the legislature, how do you plan to achieve your goals? The exact same way that I've uh, got here, friends. Five years ago, 2017, when the General Assembly met on July 4th weekend, and I found out that they were getting ready to pass a budget that was going to create 32% tax increase for each one of us. Zero reforms, nothing. Friends, I live in the most conservative district in the state of Illinois, probably in the entire nation. And when I called my representative to find out that, guess what? He'd been bought out. He was supporting this nonsense because we needed a budget. No reforms, no nothing. I got angry. I started communicating that on Facebook. I started communicating that to my friends and to my family. And unfortunately, when you stand up and you complain too much on your own, what happens? Someone expects you to come up with a solution, right? And people started coming to me and saying, hey, run for office. And friends, that's exactly what we're doing. We're, we, I, I've hit the ground running. 2019, hardly anybody knew what a witness slip was my first year as a state representative. We put out a Facebook post and gave a tutorial on a, on a witness slip. The Illinois Republican Party right now, take a look at it. Go back to my Facebook page, you'll see it. Nobody knew what a witness slip was. I've been engaging everyone to get on ILGA.gov and watch the nonsense in Springfield. Not on Fox News, what's taking place in Washington. Friends, all of this stuff that we're here about tonight and that we're frustrated is because Illinois is failing. Illinois is failing because our state elected officials are failing us because we are not holding them accountable. That's what I will do. Whether it's my party, whether it's the Democrat, I will tell you the truth and I will then let you know how to engage the process to hold these elected officials accountable. Thank you. So, anybody read The Art of the Deal? Art of the Deal. So I read that book in the early 90s. You got a guy named, what was that guy's name that wrote that book? <laughs> Donald Trump, all right? 
great book. It was an amazing book. And I wasn't a big fan back then of Donald. I, I didn't know him that well. There was a big fan. read this book because I, I was in the middle of negotiating or, or starting to start negotiating with the unions in the Chicagoland area. And they're not easy. They don't think like I do in many cases. Now, they're partners with me nowadays. But we went through some tough negotiations over the next 12, 13 years as we you know, stayed away from them and didn't join them and eventually had some intense, intense conversations and, and joined them and partnered with them. Our business in the Chicago and area are union companies, and we get along with them. Not always easy. All right? Well, I'm confident of this. We, we deal with thousands. I've, I've built my business with thousands of customers across America. Not always, and very often, they don't think like I do. We need to seek to understand who they are, try to find some common ground, and get stuff done. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. When I win this primary, I will bust my butt day and night to make sure we get five, six people in that house, new, new house seats flipped. I'll work my butt off to try and get some Senate seats flipped. It's going to be my job to do that and do it hard. And I've got some ideas there, and we've got some processes and some organizations that are going to help us do that. But what we've got to work hard, we all got to work hard, because I believe there's never been a better time to flip more seats and flip this governor's, this governor's seat, okay? Get this, this big seat, this big seat. Somebody's got to fill it. We could have five people fill the seat. Okay, we've got, we got, we got to get the big seat out of the seat, all right? We need, we need all your help. We've got to get fired up over this, all right? So we do need to flip seats, and like I talked about earlier, and we all, I think, have mentioned it, we all need to start running for office, right? We need to get in there, we need to get our voices heard. But we also want, there's something else we need to do. We need to work together as we the people, and that's what I fight for, we the people. Yes, we're all going to have different, in this room, we're all going to have different ideas on many things. But one thing I think we could all come together on is we the people we are the voice, right? That's what I fight for. And working across the aisle, yeah, we have to do that, and sometimes we don't want to, but there are key things that we can never go back on. I can't do it. Just like I think abortion, right? Nobody wants to talk about abortions, especially politicians, right? But I think as soon as there's a pregnancy test and it says it's positive, there's a baby, don't kill it. That's the way I look at it. So there's a few things we can't go against, right? We can't. But we have got to work together and somehow be Illinois family together. And that's what I will work on. I've been trained to do that. I have a lot of experience in it, too. In law enforcement, there's a lot of times that, you know, I don't quite agree with that person, but I do with that one. But that one's the one that did something wrong, so, or, or vice versa. It doesn't matter. What matters is the law and the Constitution. The Constitution is our supreme law of the land. And when we talk about crime, I just want to run something by you guys. And you can do it by applause if you want to. If you agree, if not, just don't do, do anything. What if we, what if we had an, a second amendment here? What if, what if we all had open carry? Wouldn't that take away, if I'm a criminal, I'm not going to go up to him and rob him because he's, he's got a gun and it's safely holstered at, at three, two or three points, right? What do you think? On, what would that do? Would that help crime, you think? I think it will. I mean, there's always things we, I will be working for that as well, but we, we've got to work together, together, under the Constitution, period. Thank you, Jeannie, for that, for that question. That's a very important question, and I'll tell you why it's important. The question was, how are we going to get things done in Springfield as governor when you have a supermajority Democrat? run in the state legislature? Very important question. And I'm going to give you a very important and serious answer. If Cook County turns red, <laughs> close your eyes for a moment and think Cook County red. <laughs> Illinois would be red forever. The problem is Cook County. There's a lot. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, it's been called Crook County. Not my words. However, the seriousness of it is, if we can work hard on Cook County, and I can tell you all kinds of things that are attached to that. But again, I ask you to look at me very closely. You won't have to work too hard. 
and think me running as a Republican, and I live in Cook County. Me, little me, running as a Republican in Cook County. And I've knocked on doors trying to get signatures. And the first encounter, hi, my name is Max Solomon. I'm running for, and I'm, are you Democrat or Republican? I'm Republican. <gasps> You're Republican? And then the conversation starts. I'll tell you what, there's a silent majority out there. There's a silent majority in Cook County that are scared, that are worried of coming out as Republican conservatives. Me, as governor, would embold them. Me, as governor, will let Cook County know that it's okay to be me and conservative and Republican. And that's what I intend to do. I'm going to pass the mic. <laughs> that was a bit of a trick answer. You came the closest. Inner city violence has been an ongoing problem. What are your ideas for possible solutions? We got Rabine first, then Roper, then Solomon, then Bailey. What, what's the difference, me knocking on those doors and you? I, I, don't, get, I, don't, I don't get this. What's the, dif what's the difference, right? I, I don't, I'm not seeing this here, but anyway, we'll, t we'll talk later. All right. Think about this. In our, again, I'll go back to business because it applies to, to what I've done all my life, right? Safety is the most important thing. We, we, we're, in, we're in dangerous businesses, construction services, we have dump trucks, pavers, com compactors, excavators, all these things, and people die in our industry. So we have to be ultra safe, so we make sure everybody goes home safe every night. And, and God, God bless my team, because we are, we are rated super high in safety, okay? We look at this governor's office. If I'm a governor, and I've got people dying every day in my streets at a, at a pace that's never been seen before, I've got carjackings, 10 times what it was three, four years ago. How the heck do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? Absolutely no way I'd sleep, and I don't need a lot of sleep, but I won't sleep at all if this is on my, on my watch, I guarantee it. So in talking to these other governors, I've, I've asked this question to them. What, what do you do? What's, what's been done in the past? You know, Rudy Giuliani did some cool work in New York. I, I've been talking to his team. Uh, Rick, Rick Scott had some good people that, that did some good work in Miami with, it, with him and, and the mayor there. Okay? There's, there's solutions, better solutions now with technology than ever before. But our police are handcuffed, right? So we have, we, you, you'd have to, as a governor, get this, this mayor around your, you know, in, in your, you can't get her in your camp probably, right? You got to get your arm around her, you got to have a meeting with her and say, this is how it's going to be, this is how we're going to run the city of Chicago. And with, with our help, the state, we're going to make this right. We're going to change this. this Kim Fox has got to go. I mean, this, this woman, this woman, you know, two million of her, of, her, of, her, of her money came from who? Soros. How is that acceptable in any way, right, in, our, in, our, in this great country of America? Bottom line is, if, it, if she doesn't play ball, what do we do? I think you mentioned it, right? The National Guard is the, gov is the governor's, is, is, it's governor's responsibility to, to, to use them where he needs to. The National Guard, it'd be ugly for a while, wouldn't it? But you know what? Hell of a lot better in time than it is, than it is today and where we're going. So when, I, when I've talked to the people in New York that have done work there and, and, and Rick Scott and the team, a guy that he used, I mean, they said the solution is if, if, you, if you do what we're saying and, and you let police enforce the law again, right? I mean, you actually let police chase bad people. You actually let people chase, you know, cars chase bad people, all right? You actually... Hold people you, 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 with, with bail, with, without, I mean, this, this, this without bail thing is craziness, right? You, you actually have to have bail again. Stop and frisk is probably an answer, actually, okay? These things have to be done. It's a drastic situation. It's life and death in the city of Chicago. And if we don't get our arms around as a governor, as a governor of Illinois, we're, we're, we're crazy. We will. We will, and we're going to learn from those that have done it before using old school methods and technology today. It's a six or eight month period before it turns around in a big way. It's a couple year period before we can become one of the safest cities and the safest states in the country. This is what I'm told, this is what I believe, and we're using the best minds we can in the country.
hold criminals accountable. Stop letting them out. If you do something wrong, you, you, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes, right? That's what my parents taught me. So you pay the consequences. Get our police departments back in action. Let them do their jobs. Ask them, hey, how can we get crime off the streets? They might know because they're on the streets every single day. <laughs> Lori Lightfoot is a disaster. Disaster. King Pritzker, I mean, Governor Pritzker, <laughs> is a disaster. We're tired of it. I think we all need to stand up. We all know what the problems are. We all know how to fix them. And that's just really common sense. It's common sense. Stop glorifying criminals. Start putting them where they belong. Give them a fair trial, of course, absolutely. But if they are guilty, put them away. We, we have no problems doing it with people that you know, have done their jobs and something might not have went quite right. I think you guys know what I'm talking about here in the, in the past. I was trained to do the same maneuver that that officer was trained to do, right? I didn't see, you know, whatever. But we just need to hold criminals accountable. So if they do something wrong, you, you pay for it. That's what we need to start doing. That's really simple. And then you have to lower the taxes so people can have a place to live, have nice places to live. They have something to look forward to. They, they can enjoy their home. They can put up a savings. They start letting their stresses go away because they're not paying I don't know, way too much in taxes. Like right now, you guys, we're probably even taxed right now because we're breathing this air. That's the way it is here, and we need to stop that. And we'll responsibly lower those taxes down, property taxes and all, and get rid of these weird, I don't know, we, it seems like there's taxes on top of taxes on top of taxes. Didn't we do something a long time ago about taxes? A long time ago, right? We stood up for it, because against it, because we said enough. And that's what's happening here. We're letting it happen. As governor, I would make sure that it happens. And I've been, again, trained to work with both sides of a situation and try to get them all to see there is common ground here. There is. And we can do it. We can do it together. If we stop pointing at people, as soon as you start pointing at somebody, you're done. You lost them. They're, they're not going to do anything you want. Anything. But if you bring them all together and let's talk. Let's talk. And let's remember the Constitution. That's the really that's simple thing. There's really simple ways to fix it. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. We can do this together. Inner city crimes, right? Inner city crimes, right? Okay, just making sure. One of the things that amazes me to no end, especially, again, in Cook County, Chicago is crime-ridden. We know that. And I'm looking at Chicago, and I'm looking at Cook County. It's been ran by Democrats for before I was born. Am I correct? Who was the last Republican mayor in Chicago? Good luck. We vote, and I'm going to say we, because we're all guilty of it. We vote for the same people over and over again, and they promise the world, including taking care of crime and, and, and making sure that our neighbors are safe, but then the moment they get the vote, see you in four years or in two years as far as uh, representatives are concerned. So that's the problem in Chicago especially. So here's the solution. As governor of the state of Illinois, the very first thing I will do is prioritize law enforcement. Back in the city, neighborhood by neighborhood. One of the great, thing, one of the great things is that these people don't want the crime in their neighborhood. They don't want it. They're tired of it. They're sick of it. But what to do? Many of them are afraid. Many of them are, they can't speak. They can't identify criminals because they're scared of repercussions. And guess who enables this to go on and on and on? The Democratic Party representatives. They promise the world they deliver nothing. As Republicans, as conservatives, we have to step up. And if we can take Cook County, or when we do take Cook County, Neighborhood by neighborhood, we would control crime again. 
I am going to be bold as governor of the state of Illinois. I am going to be bold enough to propose that we reinstate the death penalty. Someone who takes a gun and shoots another person has got to know there is consequences. If you take that life and you're found guilty now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say just, just kill them all just because they're found. There's a process. We have to make sure that the judicial system is strict and well tailored to that purpose. But there's got to be a consequence. And I'll be that governor to take bold steps to control crime. And that includes reinstating the death penalty. Thank you. Friends, we need tough judges. Because when tough judges render tough judgments, people don't want to break the law anymore. So when you show up at the voting booths next year, uh, hopefully before you show up, you've done your homework on these judge retentions. And friends, if you don't know who these judges are, quit voting for them. The second aspect of this, Cindy and I had dinner with Sheriff Mendrick several, years ago, or several months ago. Are you guys aware what this man's doing in his police force? Are you aware? These criminals go to correction facility. They come out corrected, friends. It's pretty amazing. Are you, are, do you know you need to talk to this man and find out what's going on? This man needs a key seat at the table to get Illinois back on track through our correctional reform. I mean, these, these, our prison systems, what's going on right now, it, it, it's, it's a joke. This is all there is to it. But everyone's hands are tied because of the laws that are passed. Because Illinois, Cook County, our, our urban areas... And they're, they're for all practical purposes, they're sanctuary cities, and for all practical purpose, Illinois is a sanctuary state, because when people are pulled over, officers cannot ask immigration status. There's several things you can't even ask. Their hands are tied from the beginning, and that must stop. But guess what? <laughs> but again, friends, you, you sit and you listen to some of this stuff, and you're like, well, I didn't know that. It's government's job to educate and inform. And that is what you're going to constantly hear from me each and every day. I'm not going to be sitting every day for a solid year and telling you, put your mask on, stay home, close your church, close the schools, close your business. Isn't that all we've heard for a solid year now? Friends, we have got to get empowered to make a difference, to be a difference, to make sure that we know who we're electing on our city boards, city councils, and our counties, because I'm telling you, many times this stuff we're talking about, again, just think, local government, local control. And as your governor, I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing. I'm going to stand out, and I'm going to point out the bad actors, and I'm going to encourage you to get involved and make a difference. And the difference that you have to make is your duty and your right to vote. But we have got to be educated to make that happen, friends. I don't know if you know this or not. Every county, about 30% of the residents of eligible voters aren't showing up to vote. Friends, we've got everything that we need. We've just got to encourage people to get registered to vote. We've got to make sure they're educated how to vote. And we have got to make sure that they show up to vote. The power resides in we, the people. And I look forward to leading you and educating you on how to get our state back under control and our urban areas safe again. Okay, this is a two-minute response. This will start with, it'll go Roper, Solomon, Bailey, Rabine. Uh, the question is... <laughs> What can be done to increase safety and security of Illinois infrastructure from its physical structure to protection against cyber attacks? Please note, in 2019, they put together a $45 billion infrastructure plan. There appears to be more infrastructure money coming from the federal government. How will this be prioritized? And how will you, especially considering IDES had about a billion dollars worth of fraud, what do you plan to do in these areas? 
Well, there, there's no joke here. We have really horrible infrastructure, and it goes from our roads to our electrical grids, et cetera, and so on. We need to do a lot of work to bring those back up. And you know, we kind of mentioned a little bit there on the, the IDES and, and IDOT and all that. We, there's, there's a lot of corruption that's going on there, and it keeps coming back to that word. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, corruption. It keeps coming right back to that dirty C word, corruption. We're wasting a lot of money. We have a group, and the way I understand it, I could be wrong, but there is a, a, a list. We'll just talk about the roads. There's a list of contractors that they're allowed to choose from, and they choose them, and then they, their buddies, they get to get, they get the, the, all the contracts, and they get all the money. We need to stop doing that. We need to open the market up for everybody. We need to have, make sure that they are licensed and bonded, and they are viable, real contractors, and et cetera, but we can do it that way. Uh, Internet. Internet is a really bad, if you live in a rural area, which I do, you can, it, the Internet's horrible. Horrible. You can't get good Internet. So we, we could do things like that, and there are some programs that are being, being put in place, but what, I, what it bothers me is that money is supposed to be used for things, and much as our programs, there's, you know, you have the, the, the start, you have the end, the target. There's supposed to be a pipeline that goes directly to that. Well, if you look, it's bleeding off all over the place, and these people's pockets just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Pritzker's one of them. You know, the, the testing supplies that he made us, you know, get tested. You have to get tested for the COVID. Well, that, well, he has his hands in that money. So no wonder he wants us to do it. So again, there's a lot of corruption, and that's what it keeps coming back to, and that's what I keep finding in my research, in my run as governor, is corruption, 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 corruption. Every time we turn around, we need to start holding politicians accountable, everybody accountable for, for that matter, but politicians. It seems like if you're a politician, you can get away with everything. You can do whatever the heck you want. Look, look what just happened. Look what happened in, uh, with Madigan. <laughs> and he didn't get held accountable. I will hold everybody accountable, everybody, my, myself included. So that's, that we, do, we really do need to work on our infrastructure. Our infrastructure is horrible, and I think it's because of corruption. It's not our faults. We're asking for it. We're paying for it but we're not getting what we're paying for, and we will, we will stop that. We'll make sure that we're getting what we're paying for. One of the things that Illinois legislature is good at is they will tell you and I, this money is earmarked or is ded dedicated to this purpose, right? And then you turn around, and then it's not used for that purpose. Everybody remember the tollway? <laughs> it's supposed to do A, B, C, but then turn around, it's X, Y, Z. Remember the tax increases were supposed to be temporary? And then they make it permanent, and then they increase it. Remember lottery? Right? We could go on and on and on. That's the problem. And that's why we need a, a candidate that understands the problem and knows the solution. And sometimes the solution is staring us in the face. But we ignore it in Springfield because, of course, the Democrats think they are super majority. They can get away with whatever they want to do. The solution is simple. If we earmark a billion, 40 billion, whatever it is, first we have to trust the experts or we have to hire experts in the area of infrastructural security Right? People who know what they're doing, not Fauci. I'm in trouble. I'm going to be canceled. Uh, we need people who we can trust, right? And then we earmark a specific, that's what budgeting is for. We say, hey, Illinoisans, we're going to spend $1 on this particular thing. I'm going to be the governor that's going to come back to you at the end of that fiscal year and tell you we did spend a dollar on that thing. And if that problem is resolved, I don't need any more of any money going in there, at least for the next budget year, right? The other thing we have to do is hold people accountable. Illinois is very corrupt. People need to start going to jail. Friends, we keep talking about throwing money at the problems. 
Money is not always the solution. People are the solution. Putting men and women in charge of these agencies who are not afraid to do the right thing and make swift corrective action if needed. I've got 15 men and women that work on the farm with me. And sometimes if things don't go right or somebody's continually messing up, I take them aside and I have a conversation and try to help them, you know, be more productive. Every now and then that doesn't work out. And I've got to let someone go because it's just, it's causing too much of a problem. Friends, this last January, State Representative now Senator Terry Bryant, had someone call her uh, early one morning. They were up trying to fill their unemployment papers up through the Ellen Dep Department of Employment Security. They were on the internet at about 2 in the morning, and all of a sudden they were ex exposed to just numbers, just numbers, accounts, Social Security numbers, dollar amounts. This was immediate. We were in session in January. This was immediately reported. Friends, I'm going to sit here and tell you billions of dollars have been lost of our taxpayers' dollars because Governor Pritzker ignored it. He failed to do anything. And then a few months later, when he finally was, the heat turned up, he said, well, my, my director over there, they're working on it. Friends, nothing's happened. At one point in time, Illinois spent uh, quite a bit of money for a new computer program. Friends, I've, I'm a farmer and, and a state senator. I have received multiple cards saying that I have, I have applied for unemployment benefits. I've received letters. This money, in many cases, is being paid out. But it is the people that stop the problem. It is being ignored. So by putting good people in place and holding them accountable, by educating you what's going on, by getting involved and holding your elected officials accountable. This is how we fix the problem. It's our involvement. It keeps coming back to that. I know it seems so simple, but friends, that's the deal. So infrastructure. I don't even mention in my top four or five things because there's so many important things. And this is a, this is a very important one, especially cybersecurity, which I don't know a lot about. I'm an expert, expert at a few things. One thing I'm expert at is concrete pavements and asphalt pavements. I gotta tell you, the, the designs we use in concrete pavements and asphalt pavements in our state of Illinois are antiquated. They're antiquated because lobbyists help build those specifications. Unions and lobbyists, so that they could use more steel in the concrete, in, in concrete roads, when fibers are the answer. Not only are fibers less expensive to use, but the productivity goes up about five, six, seven, eight times using fiber instead of steel and concrete. We've been doing it for, for 10 years with the Raybine Group, paving parking lots across the country, big distribution centers, taking steel out of concrete, using fiber, and using 3D technology to pave that concrete. Okay? At, a, at, a, at a pace, a production pace that's five, six, seven times faster. So it's that much less labor. But that's the problem. Labor, less labor. In, in Chicago, in areas like Chicago, Detroit, these heavily union areas, New York, New Jersey, they don't want to reduce labor at any cost even if it's the benefit of the customer, the taxpayer. So I know infrastructure very well, and I'm sure when we look at cybersecurity and we look at, we look at our, so many different things in infrastructure, there's many other things like that where we're not using innovation to, the, to, to, be, to be the best in the world. In, in Illinois, there's no reason why we can't find the best minds in the world to serve us. It's a great state in the middle of the greatest country in the world. Anybody, any mind. Our, our little paving business goes to Germany, Latvia, Israel to learn from the best minds in engineering in our, in our industry. Just, we don't do this in Illinois. We don't do this in, 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 in states where, we're, where we, we, we don't care about progressing because we would be more productive and be less labor, less materials, lobbyists that own the materials. So we've got to be innovative. Again, I, I, I'm sure if Mendrick's head's going to get kind of big here. But Clark, I know Clark. He's got, I mean, he's nothing compared to this guy. When you talk about innovation, this, I mean, you sit in front of this guy for an hour someday. Anybody can do that, listen to him someday, all right? My mind works crazy when it comes to innovation because it makes our lives easier, serves our customers better. That's all this guy thinks about. He's not thinking about less time, less hours. He's thinking about how do we do it the best we can using the best innovation in the world. And that's who I am. That's what I'm about. Infrastructure, in my eyes, I'm an expert at pavements. I'm not at cybersecurity, but I'll find the best minds in the world. I guarantee it. Okay, lots of people are leaving Illinois all the time, and there's lots of reasons. 
So I want you guys to answer this question by picking one of the reasons why people are that fed up that they have to live, leave where they live and explain why. Just one? Just one. Yeah. I mean, you could go on and on for hours, but just one and explain it. Why, why that's so important. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you have Solomon, Bailey, Rabine, Roper. Just one. Taxes. So I've knocked on doors. And I'm an attorney uh, by profession. And I've talked to clients, and I've knocked on doors trying to get petition signatures. And the number one thing they tell me and you hear personal stories. There's no, it makes zero sense for me to pay my mortgage, 30-year mortgage, and I'm done paying for, for what I bought the house for, only to be kicked out of my house because of property taxes 35, 40 years later. It's not fair, it makes no sense. That's why property tax reform, I'm gonna be your reform candidate, I'm gonna be your reform governor. We are going to be reforming property taxes. There's a lot of formulas out there. I don't know why Illinois is stuck with this, but we know why, and we're gonna change that why. It makes no sense for people to give up on their house and moved to Indiana, moved to uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, and all the states around us, right? Makes no sense. Property taxes has to be reformed. That's big. That's huge. And that's why people are living. Did you guys know we lost a congressional seat because people are? And that's going to continue. And you know who is turning their blind eye and deaf ears to that? The Democrats. I don't, man, it, it's amazing. Sometimes you wonder, what are they, what are they gaining from, from the downward spiral that Illinois is, is going under their watch? We need to turn that around. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask for your support. Let's get it done together. Property tax reform. Well, first of all, I want to thank and commend everyone that's here tonight that has chosen to stay in Illinois. Thank you, because we have got to work together to fix this state for the future of our children. Because everyone here can move across the state line and you will experience probably at least a 30% pay increase on your tax savings alone. Friends, Illinois has a massive amount of boundaries around it. And you know what's happening around those edges. People drive across state lines to get gas because they're going to save about 50 cents a gallon. What happens when they go to those outlying communities? They go to the grocery store. They do their shopping. They have dinner. Friends, we've got to stop this. And I'm telling you, we can. One of the pillars and first day agendas is we put good, responsible men and women as directors of all these agencies. I will be calling for a zero-based budget. They're going to start at ground level. They're going to work their way up. You will be able to look at the budget and know where that money is going. I'm going to tell you, there will be agencies that are cut because there are, no agent, there are some agencies that are simply fluff that have grown into dinosaurs that must go. I see it, okay? Finally, we're going to go into our schools and we're going to wipe the slate clean of unfunded mandates. You want to realistically start attacking your property taxes? Let's get rid of the heavy administration cost on the top. That's how we do it. Government, state government says, I'm going to give you this, but, or, or you have to do this, but oh, by the way, I'm not going to give you any money on it, and, and you've got to tell us how it works. So you want to know why many of the schools are, are continuing to hire assistant principals, assistant superintendents, on and on and on. We've got to stop this. And by doing this, we can begin to rein in our taxes. And once we begin to grow our economy, we're going to attract people. 
Because when more people come to the state of Illinois, they're going to work, they're going to earn money, they're going to support local business, they're going to pay taxes, which is going to lessen the burden on all of us. So where do you start, right? I mean, come on, there's so many reasons we're losing people. But the, 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 key, the key is this. 15 years ago, I started building my business across the country. And I didn't have an idea, really, of how we compared in many respects, whether it be regulatory environment to business, property taxes, or culture. Didn't really know the difference until I traveled across the country. And I realized back 15 years ago, people look at me and say, you're from Chicago land area, Chicago, Illinois? I said, yeah, yeah. And they said, you lucky son of a gun to build your business in that great state in the middle of the greatest country in the world? Wow, you're, you're blessed. I would say, yeah, I'm blessed. And back then, 15 years ago, our regulatory environment in Illinois was a little worse than average, okay? Today, we're by far the worst in the country, okay? As I, as I got to know these leaders in government, their RGA and some other organizations I've been a part of, I found out that some of these places were actually cutting their property taxes, cutting regulation, saying, come to Indiana, come to, come to Wisconsin, come to Florida, Texas. And they were inviting me to come to their place, their, their place to start my businesses, right? And so when I looked into these things, I couldn't believe what they were doing. We're, we're adding taxes they're taking away. So in the RGA, I, I asked a lot of questions. And I believe property tax is a big deal, but being a business person, I got to tell you, regulation is a big deal as well. Pro if we go to property tax alone, and we say, okay, again, who's the best in the world? Who's the, the best in the country's history when it comes to changing, restructuring property tax, and actually regulation as well? I asked the governors, who's the team? There's one guy that stood out the most, often, often. The name, same name came up over and over. Mitch Daniels guy, Jeb Bush's guy, Scott Walker's guy. It was, it was uh, even, even Brown in, in, in California when he, when he reduced property taxes. One guy, Art Laffer. So I seeked out Art Laffer. I went to Nashville. It interviewed, I had an interview for him to work for me. It took me about a day to convince him to come to work for me. When I, when I first began to run, I, I, I convinced him to come to work for me. He's on my team today. His team of five or six people are amazing. They're on our team. They're on your team in Illinois. The same person that convinced Mitch Daniels to take his property tax from 2.2% to 1%. Okay, Jerry Brown in California, a dumbass Democrat, he got, he got it from 3% down to 1%, and it's still there today. And their property values continue to go up. They don't sell property there very often because their taxes are frozen at that 1% at old value. So bottom line is, hire the best, and I've done that, and I'll continue to do that. So we in Illinois have the best minds in the regu regulatory change and tax change in the country. We got them. They're yours, and they're mine. I'm not tell don't tell these guys, all right? Freedom. Freedom. That's what I've been hearing the most from Illinois. And you know what? You could tie many things in to freedom. Taxes are too high. That doesn't feel very free. You're always at work. You don't get to enjoy your family. Uh, we got to look at the property taxes. We have all these mandates. I think the biggest in the outflow from Illinois has been from the tyrannical government, namely J.B. Pritzker, that has been telling us, this is what you're going to do. Well, enough of that. So again, it comes right back to freedom. We all want freedom. That's why we're proud to be American. Freedom is, yes, freedom is America, and we, we have to fight for America. When we get into a place like Illinois, we love Illinois. Illinois could be the most amazing state, which I think it is. It just needs some help. It needs, some, needs us to get TLC, a little TLC, get the tyrannical government out, right? Get the taxes lowered down, get our streets safe, make it to where we can enjoy our state, help fix up. You know, I'm a fisherman, I'm a hunter. You know, I love fishing and hunting. You know, and, and I grew up hunting and fishing. And the lake that I love, which is Spring Lake, I don't know if anybody knows it, but it's down in central Illinois. You can get some big, I, I caught a 10 pound bass out of that lake. Well, as I've gotten older, and I'm getting old, but it, it's starting to fall apart. They, they quit funding it. There, there's no money going to it, either that or it's being lost somewhere. The weeds are growing up, trees are growing up, the roads are falling in, just like the rest of our state. So freedom, it all comes right back down to freedom. Freedom to be free. That's all it really falls down to. So we got to do this together. Again, I say this a lot, together. But together we're saving Illinois. Who's next? For the audience, we have two questions left. Um, and this is the behemoth. 
We're approaching a $500 billion pension debt, which is unsustainable. What's your plan to fix it? Two minutes in order, Bailey, Rabine, Roper, Solomon. Friends, I'm the only elected state legislator that's trying to tackle this pension problem because I'm going to tell you something. The pension debt, it's going to bring down Illinois if left unattended. The problem is if Moody's rates us at junk bond status, remember when I told you earlier the last 20 years of uh, the budget have been uh, stabilized by borrowed money and selling bonds? Well, if Moody's rates us at junk bond status, guess what? Illinois can no longer sell those bonds or borrow money. They're broke. They're done. That's what that means. The men and women who have earned these pensions, they deserve to know that they're going to get them. And friends, there are plans to make sure that we ensure that and get this thing turned around. I'm addressing that. If we simply work with the COLA, if we ask for some health insurance participation, then we can start putting all new hires on 401k plans, and we never talk about the pension problem again. Ted Dabrowski with wire points has an amazing plan, and it's foolproof. And I did some things. I'm, I, will, I will never lie to you, and I'll say what needs to be said, and I'll do what needs to be done, even if I have to stick my neck out if I know I'm right. And that's essentially what I did this past March when I, when I uh, put out, introduced a constitutional amendment to remove the pension protection clause because nobody in Springfield will talk about the problem. Oh, the Constitution protects it. We did tier two. 100% of the time, the men and women who have garnered these pensions are scared to death of their future. 100% of the time, we the people are scared to death of this inflated pension debt that continues to grow. We will sit at the table with the men and the women in the unions, not the union bosses, not the career politicians, not the political elites, and we'll solve this problem. There is a plan in place. I've placed it many times on my Facebook page. Go there, check it out, but you've got to have some boldness and courage to stand up and talk about this, and that's exactly what I've been doing for the last three years now. So, Ted Dabrowski, great mind in our, in our state of Illinois when it comes to pension reform and when it comes to many other things fiscally. Um, I actually had him on the phone in a meeting with, with this team in, in Nashville, and, uh, and, I, and I was going to, I said to Art, I said, Art, this seems like a great plan. It seems like the plan. Can we, can we just go with this? Can we use it? Art says, you can't commit to this plan. You can't commit to, and we looked at the Wisconsin plan. We looked at Indiana's plan and what they did, right? California did a little version of this, not much, but you know, we look at these different plans that, that Art was part of. He looked at Ted's plan, thought, seems like a pretty good plan, but there's other options. So I said, I want to talk about something. I want, to, I want something to, to, to buy into that I can sell as this is what we're going after. He said, you can't do that. He goes, by the time you're in office, things will change. And if you, if you commit to any of these things, you'll be called a liar. And if you, if you get caught talking about these things, they'll, 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 they'll attack you at all different angles and, and you're going to get stuck in the weeds. So my thing is this. It's been done before, not quite this big. When, when Art Laffer, at the end of a couple-day meeting, he, he, looks up, he looks at me, he goes, he goes Gary, he goes, uh, this is going to be the most fun. My team were talking before you got here. We, we, we were at dinner. He says, my team were, and I were meeting. We said, this will be the most fun we've ever had in turning around any government. Now, he, he was Reagan's person. Margaret Thatcher, he worked for Margaret Thatcher, turning around Great Britain and all these different states. He says, this will be the most fun we'll ever have. He goes, this Illinois is so bad. He goes... It's going to be so fun to turn around. It'll be the biggest turnaround in the history of our country. And we can do it. So i got to rely on the expert, this little guy, Art Laffer. i got to rely on him and his amazing team to know we can do it. Now, again, as Darren said, we got some great people in Illinois that have, have, have dug into this deep. And, and Ted's probably, in my opinion, one of the best. So we got to find the experts and get it done. To, to, to commit to an A plan is impossible at this time. But I, I believe we, get, we have to protect the pensions for those who are promised. But, boy, if we don't look at the future of it, there's no protecting them. What I'm told is 8 to 12 years, pensions will crash, and our state will crash with it. So we have to, we have to, we have to paint that picture of darkness and what that looks like. A story, 20% of darkness, what that looks like, and 80% of what it could look like if we, if we, could, if we, could, we could move to the right direction, right? So that's the plan.
So 401k, Darren, Senator Darren Bailey mentioned that. You know, I've been talking about thrift savings plan. I'm a former law enforcement, an Army veteran, and in the Army, you know, my son, he gets it right now. It's the thrift savings plan. And I think that's a good place to start, 401ks. If it's good enough for our soldiers, it should be good enough for our, let's start with the politicians, right? Let's start with the new politicians. As governor, I would say, you know what? I don't want the stinking pension. I don't want it. I want the 401k, what I pay in. Why? Because our forefathers said, we serve not to come in to get rich, not to come in to get famous, that we serve. And I think that is a forgotten thing especially in Illinois, but it's happening all over our country, but we, we come in to serve, and that's what we need to do. So 401k, and, and as, as uh, Mr. Rabine talked about, is, you know, we can't just commit to a plan right away. We've got to be responsible with it because, again, you know, and, and Senator Bailey has talked about it too, but we, we throw around candy, not us, but our, our leaders in government here in Illinois, they throw around money like it's candy at a parade. It's, money's nothing to them, nothing. You know, and... I'm not a millionaire. I'm, I, grow, I, I grew up, I had to work. <laughs> I grew up on a farm. I detasseled. I did a lot of things. You know, I, I went without a lot. And so I know what it's like, even as an adult, you know, I've had to blood, sweat, and tears. I know what it's like to have to really struggle. I, am I going to eat today? I, am I? Am I going to be able to feed my kids? So it all comes down to, you know, with this, these, uh, uh, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. My God. Let's, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> the pensions, the pensions, we've got to save those. The Chicago's Teachers Union, here we have this word again, corruption. They're abusing it. There's a lot of abuse happening in our pensions. We have some people that are getting multiple pensions. Okay, enough of that, enough. And I would lead that charge and say, you know what, I don't want the pension. I'm doing what our forefathers said, and that is I'm serving my state. Ladies and gentlemen, that question was for me. <laughs> That's the reason I'm running. The only reason I'm standing before you today, if this were to be a money contest, I wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> the reason I'm running for governor of the state of Illinois is, and remember this, CPR for Illinois, Constitutional pension reform. Ladies and gentlemen, there is, there is no other way to fix our pension crisis without the Constitution reform. Ladies and gentlemen, there are three books or three documents you can find on me at any time. You can stop me on the street and you will find three things on me, in my bag, in my car, or on me. The Bible, U.S. Constitution, and the Constitution of the Great State of Illinois. I have it right here. Article 13, Section 5. So you may not know this, but in 2015, the Supreme Court of the State of Illinois came down with a ruling where that article was interpreted, and there are two words in there that says, pensions benefits shall not be diminished or impaired. What does that mean? I don't care if it's a, well, the Democrats are not going to do it, but every Republican governor must commit to the fact that the solution, the problem to the pension crisis was in the Constitution or is in the Constitution, therefore the solution is a constitutional reform. And I'm going to tell you two things really quickly because I'm yellow. Every 20 years we get a chance to decide whether we want to reform or re revisit our Constitution. Every 20 years, the last one was in 20, 2008. The next one is in 2028, six years. I'm going to be the governor standing, singing, and shouting about the reason why we should all vote yes to reform that Constitution. There are many ways that I'm going to do this, but I'm going to ask you to go to my website, www.maxsolomon.org. It's going to be a big issue for me. CPR for Illinois. Thank you. Okay, now, last question. It's going to be Rabine, Roper, Solomon, then Bailey. And the last question is not too complicated. Other than putting uh, Fauci in jail, uh, how would you manage the pandemic in Illinois? 
How would you manage the pandemic in Illinois? Would have managed it? How would you manage it? How would you, as governor, manage the, pen, the pandemic in Illinois? But you can't say put Fauci in jail because I already did. <laughs> yeah, so, so again, I was blessed to be part of the conversations as the governors across the country, Republican governors, were collaborating on this issue on a, on a, on a daily basis originally and a, and a weekly base, basis eventually. Basis eventually. And, and it really, they, they collaborated with great scientists on both sides of the coin. Some that said this is, you know, you need to shut everything down, it's gonna be terrible. Some that said it's, it's a little worse than the flu. Many that said that, you know, if, if you're younger than, than 50 years old and you're healthy, you got nothing to worry about it. If you're older and you got health problems, you, you gotta worry about it. And, and these governors, you know, Christy Nome, if you guys remember, didn't shut anything down. She, and she, she, was, she was on some of these calls and she said, I'm not shutting anything down. DeSantis was not too far behind her to keep everything open in Florida. They, so our, our, first, our, our first, you know, objective is safety, of course, right? But safety with education. But safety is also, it's respect for jobs, it's respect for these small businesses, it's, it's respect for our economy, right? Our economy is one of the worst in the country because we did the worst job managing this thing. And, and, and this, this governor, from whatever I heard, collaborated with nobody. Even the Democrats across the country, the Democrat governors, the, the, the Governor Association, this guy was nowhere to be found. When you really believe you're the smartest person in any room you walk into, you're not too smart. You're just not too smart. And this is what we got. We've got a governor that really believed he's a health science or, uh, scientist or something, right? I mean, he's telling us how to live our lives. This guy's telling us how to live our lives. I mean, some of us, are, some of us in this room are healthier than him, actually. So... I believe in collaboration with the best minds you can find in the country and the world. These governors did that. So in retrospect, I, I wouldn't have shut anything down. I wouldn't have shut, I wouldn't have shut down business. I, I will never pick winners and losers in business. That's wrong. I, 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 will never, I will never shut our schools down. That's wrong. We, won't man, we will never mandate anything in the state of Illinois. Community by community, with good education, we could decide. Every, people can decide how to be safe. And we've got great scientists across the globe, across the country, we can tap into always on these things. So I'm confident that the decisions he made were terrible for our state and our, our economy. Many people have left our state because of these reasons, right? Because they, they, they don't feel, as I think you said this, Chris, they don't feel like they live in a free country. This is a big reason people are moving. You don't feel free, freer as you do when you go across the border to Indiana. You go to Tennessee, Florida, Texas. We are going to be a free country, a free state, and a free country when I'm the governor of Illinois. So yeah, the best thing to do is collaborate. <clears throat> that, that, that's like, that's common sense, right? If you don't know the answer to something, you go out and find a bunch of very smart people, get them in a room and say, oh, what the heck are we going to do? That's what we should have done the whole time. We never should have closed down, maybe, maybe at the very, very beginning for a week or two, just to see what the heck's going on. We had the SARS, we had all these other weird things, and they didn't put masks, they didn't force these masks on us. They didn't force vaccines down in our bodies. They said, uh, well, let's see where it goes. Same with this, the COVID-19. I've been around thousands and thousands of people, and so I think these guys probably have too. You guys might have been as well. I don't wear masks. That's my choice. I'm a free American. I don't wear masks. Again, yeah, if, it should be your choice if you want to wear a mask, and that's how it should have been. As soon as we found out, okay, it's not as bad as they're saying. It is bad. It, it is bad. I'm not saying it's not. Because, you know, we did get some, you know, good brains came together in the country, not our state, certainly, uh, <laughs> uh, that did find out, okay, it, it is bad, okay, but it only affects really certain people and then certain types of things, of, you know, okay. Again, it still ultimately falls down to we are free Americans, and if we don't want to wear something on our face that keeps us from breathing and breathing in our carbon dioxide and, and all the bacteria that forms, because the mouth is, the human mouth is one of the dirtiest things, right? most full of bacteria. So it should be our choice. Nobody should be telling us what to do. I think I became 18 and I decided, you know, I, I think I can do this. My parents did a great job and that's what we need to do as well. Same with the vaccines. You should never be forced to put something in your body. I think if you read the rape laws, it kind of falls in the same category as this vaccine. If you really think about it, they're saying, okay, I'll give you some money if you put it in you. No, I don't want it in me. Okay, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to force you to do it or you're going to quit. You know, isn't that what we have problems with in, in the office place and, you know, in jobs? Isn't that what we're fighting against so people can comfortably work places and not have to worry about somebody jamming something inside them? 
I mean, really, it's really simple. It should our, be our choice, and that's how we should have dealt with it, period. We should have dealt with it. Let's, let's get a handle on it, see where it is. Let's see what all these other great minds are doing. Let's do the same thing. Never should have closed down because the pandemic of broke is worse than the pandemic of C-19. I'm going to be bold and give um, President Trump a lot of credit. I don't know what the world saw, but I saw a man in the middle of the most robust economy in the most successful, my lifetime, of living in the United States, the most successful president, having to deal with whether to shut down this roaring economy or not. I saw a man who was trying to find solutions while the whole world and Democrats and Fauci's are pointing the finger, he's the devil, he's this, is that. It was heartbreaking, and I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I happen to know that drug chloroquine. And I say this, I, I grew up on it. It's a personal story. I knew that drug. So when I heard the president said, wait a minute, I know that drug, yeah. Oh, it works? Okay, I'll try it. Try it. And then, of course, he got what he got. But anyway, that's looking backwards. What am I going to do as governor of Illinois? Here's what I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to do. This gentleman have talked about things we're not going to do. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the control back in your hands. I'm going to do everything I can to give you the information, tell you what this disease does, and let you have the information. And I'm going to tell you to make the best decision for you and your family. If you want to try chloroquine, go for it. If you don't want it, nobody's going to force you. Remember that word mandate? Banned. If you want to wear face masks, I'll provide them for you. I give you thousands of them. Wear them, whatever you want. But I'm not going to force anyone to wear them. We're going to provide you with the information. We're going to provide you with the equipment. We're going to provide you with education so you can make the best decision for you. I'm not going to close your business, your churches, or your family. Thank you. Friends, if there's one thing that we do not forget over this next year, we must not forget that Governor J.B. Pritzker hid behind the guise of COVID-19 to destroy our state to destroy our lives, to destroy the futures of the children who missed a whole year of school, that must never happen again. <laughs> Friends, I'm going to tell you again, we've heard a lot of good talk. We've heard a, lot, had, heard a lot of good ideas. May 23rd, I filed the lawsuit against Governor Pritzker. It was heard on July 2nd, and it was won. And much of the state, if businesses stayed open, churches reopened, some schools reopened, because of the hope that they found that, wow, I think I was right. I think we really are a free people. Governor Pritzker should have called the General Assembly into session. It was the General Assembly's, the representation of the people, to decide whether or not we need to be wearing masks, whether or not businesses and schools should be closed, how dangerous it has been for one man to unilaterally make these decisions and hinder our lives. We cannot accept that, friends, and it is we, the people, that have got to stand up and put an end to this. You know, we have a, have you ever, anybody here heard of the Illinois Emergency Management Agency Act? Go home and Google that thing. 262 pages. Read it. It's a roadmap for what should have happened. Friends, in the state of Illinois, one size does not fit all. Every county is unique and different. And every county should be making that decision for their own community. And when that county public health department needs help, guess what? They come to the Illinois Department of Public Health and say, hey, we need some help. 
When those people run out of resources and need some help, they come to the governor and say, hey, we need some help. And then the governor goes to the General Assembly and says, hey, we need to do something here. None of that happened, and we can never allow that again. I stood up for you. I got kicked out of the General Assembly for standing against the mask mandate. I have stuck and put my neck on the line, and friends, it will not stop. Wow. Thank you. Thank you to all of our governor candidates that are here tonight. Of course, there is a few of them missing. I want everybody to know that they were all invited to attend, but there are two that are missing. You can figure that out. But I also, you know, I, I, I really do appreciate, Claire, all your hard work putting this forum together, honestly. You see, this is the difference really between Republicans and Democrats. We come together, we discuss in depth the issues, we ask the tough questions, it's not a rah-rah scene, and we start with the Pledge of Allegiance, a prayer, and a beautiful, beautiful rendition of God bless the USA. I mean, that was just, to me, I was just moved by that. You're not going to see, you will not see a Democrat forum start that way, I assure you. I assure you. That's the difference between us and them. We firmly believe in America, God, family, and faith, and freedom. So with that, you all have, it said one to three minutes. Huh. How much will they take? You all have time for a closing statement, and then I will turn the mic back over to Claire to finish up with the straw poll. And start, uh, starting in the same order that we were going before, Mr. Roper, you will be first for a closing statement, and then Mr. Solomon, Senator Bailey, and Mr. Rabine. Thank you. Thank you for putting this together. This is amazing. This is what we have to do. We have to stand up together and save Illinois. To get, that's really all it really boils down to. And I, you guys have been amazing. You've been here a long time. But there's a lot of things at stake if we don't stand up, if we don't research all candidates, if we don't find out who do we think will do the best job at what is needed right now, right now. I don't want to take up any more of your time. If you guys want to know anything about me, ChristopherJRoper.org. I have some stuff in the back, some literature. Uh, but again, you guys are, you guys are, we, we are what is what it's going to take. Standing up together and fighting the corruption, fighting the tyrannical government, and demanding that they listen to us. God bless you guys. Thank you. First, I just, I just want to say thank you. Uh, if you understand where I'm coming from, then you will appreciate my appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the American dream personified. I am humbled. I am thankful. God has been good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a young boy or a man now who was a young boy who lost his mom at the age of 14. And my dad, two and a half years later, by the time I was 17, I was without parents. I'm from a family of six siblings. My youngest brother was five months old when our mom died and three years old when our dad died. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to the United States with $40. $40. Do you want to know what happened to that $40? I lost it at O'Hare Airport. <laughs> I am thankful, I am grateful just to stand before you and be a candidate for the governor of the state of Illinois. Stories like mine are rare, and that's why I take this very seriously. I understand the problem. This country has been so good to me. This state has been so good to me. I got my education from this beautiful country, this beautiful state. I am an attorney. I am an ordained minister. I have a master's degree in theology. I teach political science. I am thankful. I understand constitutions. I understand politics. I understand governance. 
and that's why I'm running for governor. And I want you to remember that the problem in Illinois is the pension. If we solve the pension problem, Illinois will be on its way to a better fiscal health. I promise you that. I am the candidate who understands that, and I am the candidate who is telling you that what we need is CPR for Illinois. In addition to that, consolidation of government agencies, and finally, reformation. Government is broken. Illinois is broken. Together, let's fix Illinois. I thank you all. God bless you all. Have a good night. What an honor it is to be here before you tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to come here. Thank you so much for organizing this. Friends, Proverbs 28.2 says, When there is moral rot in a nation, its government topples easily. But wise and knowledgeable leaders bring stability. Friends, Illinois has been void, been void of wise and knowledgeable leaders. It's up to us to change that. I know many of you, most of you, maybe all of you have, have kind of tuned in. Maybe you know who I am. Go to baileyforillinois.com, check us out, follow my Facebook feeds. Just about every morning I try to come to you and, and tell you what's going on and couple that with a devotion and prayer to give you hope because I believe in hope in Illinois. I'm married to the woman of my dreams for 35 years. We have four children. We have 10 grandchildren. And this is why we fight for their future. And I know you have those same interests, worries, and concerns. I never wanted to be a state representative. God opened the door to move to the senator. And he has so graciously afforded this opportunity to come and stand before you and ask for your trust and your vote to be your next governor. Friends, I will never lie to you. I will never lead you astray. I will do what it takes to make sure that things get done. I did that tonight. I threw, threw two red flags at you. I have my FOID card. I have my concealed carry. But I believe in the Second Amendment that our constitutional rights shall not be hindered. And both of those cards hinder our rights, friends. Oh Voiding the FOID will go. It can go. All the information we need is on our driver's license. When I started as state representative, we were 25,000 applications behind on the FOID card. Now we're approaching 400,000 behind. Men and women have waited for two years for their renewals. That is unconstitutional and illegal, and it is simply not right. Friends, I'm as concerned as you are about voter integrity. So much so that two weeks ago I introduced four bills moving forward to take care of this issue. I am calling that our county courthouses scrub the voter roll every year. I'm calling that mail-in ballots are digitally tracked the moment they leave the courthouse to the moment they come back. I'm calling for the ease of Illinois state government, that 1% of the ballots and signatures be audited each year. And I'm calling for a mandatory voter ID. If you don't have a driver's license and you don't have a state ID, I'm calling for the state to give you one. I think that's a fair price to ask for freedom and, and, and good elections. Friends, we've got a lot at risk at stake. When you leave here tonight, you go to your county clerk's office tomorrow and you sign up as an election judge or a poll watcher. They're going to tell you how to do it. You're going to take a test. And then you hook up with Illinois Conservative Union or Freedom Works and you find out what to look out for. And you show up and you help protect our elections coming up because we have a lot to do. We saw that it works in Virginia because 90 to 95 percent of those precincts were full of men and women watching the process. Okay, And in 2022, we are going to fire J.B. Pritzker, and we are going to return moral integrity to the state of Illinois. God bless you, and thank you so much. God bless the great state of Illinois. So I've talked a lot about, uh, I said unfair advantage a few times here tonight, because I think life is about building these unfair advantages. So you, could, you can compete in life, compete at whatever you do whether it's building a great family, a business, or a government. Well, I, I was blessed to be born in this great country. I think that's an unfair advantage of the rest of the world to be born here in America, in this great country. I think it's, it's an unfair advantage to marry up. And for me, I married an amazing woman. Met her at 19 years old. We married at 22, 21. 
I, and I, I met this woman that, that brought faith to my life that I would have never had without her. She taught me a few simple things. Common sense and, and, the, and the idea of serving others more than yourself. So serving others more than yourself. We don't see this very often. And we have, we have common sense and can't be bought. We're, t- we're having a hard time finding that right now because people don't understand is if you're in government, you're there to serve, like many of us have said. In business, if we don't serve, we have no customers. If we don't serve our family, we got rotten kids. In, in government, we see in Illinois, we don't, are we, these politicians, the governor, they don't serve us. They serve themselves. That's got to stop. I guarantee I'll be that governor. And when I bring my unfair advantages here to the state of Illinois as a governor, we're going to serve our jobs, our businesses better than ever before. We'll create more jobs than ever before. 50,000 jobs a year is my goal to create them, not lose them. 50,000 jobs a year. Our property taxes, our property taxes, as we said, highest in the country, right? We need to cut them. 50% is my goal, and our, my team thinks it can be done. 50% is my goal. That's a, that's a big chunk. And with that, our property values will go up like they haven't in a long time. And when it comes to really serving as a governor, as politicians and government, if we don't serve our police, allow them to have the best tools in the world to take care of us and keep us safe, we're pretty lousy at serving, aren't we? And if we don't take care of our children by serving our children, not with the best unions in the world, the best politicians in the world, but the best systems in the world to let our, our parents have a say-so in what, what goes on in their schools, never to be indoctrinated like they are today. So my goal, I'm a paving guy. I'm a paving guy, and my slogan's paving the way to stay. If we do these things well with an all-star team, an unfair team that I'm going to be able to build, right? We will be paving the way to stay in Illinois once again, where everyone in this room, our kids, our grandkids, are going to want to stay in this great state, build their families here. That's my goal. I want every one of my businesses, every one of my family members, my three grandchildren to stay in this great state. I got four kids here, four kids. Three of them are are professionals. They're questioning whether they want to stay here or not. I'm telling them they got to stay. I've got one son that lives with me. He's 20 years old. He's still trying to figure out. he, He works by my side usually. My grandkids, three grandkids, beautiful grandkids, I can't stand thinking that they won't be here if we don't change the state. So we're going we're gonna to make some big changes, and we're going to be paving the way to stay. I want to hear everybody in this room one time say paving the way to stay. I'll say Raybine, the way it's pronounced, R-A-B-I-N-E, Raybine. Make sure we all know that, okay? I will say Raybine, you say paving the way to stay. Ready? Raybine! Paving the way to stay. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate all the work you guys have done. Thanks for everything. How about a big round of applause for all of our candidates? Thank you, gentlemen. And a big uh, round of applause for Jeannie Ives. 